Back in the earlier days of power scaling, the Saiyan Saga of Dragon Ball was seen as a milestone for where most other anime would sort of peak out. To this day, people still debate if Naruto can even bust a planet, and Vegeta did it with a finger. I thought it would be fun to see how the world of One Punch Man would respond, specifically the S-Class heroes, to this benchmark of power scaling. If you guys like One Punch Man and Dragon Ball comparisons, or like power scaling content in general, specifically One Punch Man oriented, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video. Anyway, let's get on to the video. Like I said, we'll be talking about if the Saiyans invaded the world of One Punch Man. We'll assume this takes place in a similar situation to Boros, so most of the S-Class are already present, but Saitama's not. Maybe we'll talk about Saitama later. Blast also isn't there, but we'll go over a possible scenario if the Saiyans beat all of the normal heroes. To set up a bit of a story, we'll say that all the heroes are gathered in City A when Child Emperor satellites pick up two spaceships approaching the Earth. The two Saiyans, Vegeta and Nappa, then land, and with the flick of a finger, Nappa annihilates City A. However, the Hero Association headquarters survives, for, um, plot reasons, yeah, and the heroes emerge. So how would the battle go down? Generally speaking, even the lower level S-Class scale easily to the beginning of series Genos, who could blow away entire city blocks and even mountains. This is because after several upgrades, Genos still struggles against the Sea King. However, later on after getting stronger, Puri Puri Prisoner, the weakest S-Class, can stomp monsters as strong as Sea King. The prerequisite of being S-Class is also to defeat demon level monsters, which are able to destroy cities. The strongest heroes, Tornado of Terror and Genos in his full power mode, are able to fight Psychos fused with the Monster King Orochi. This fusion could slice off a portion of the Earth's crust, and Orochi by himself performed a Gaia Cannon, and both of these feats usually come out to being considered multi-continental. And on the high end, possibly enough to destroy small planets. Genos can match blasts with Psychos, and Tatsumaki at full power can totally overpower them, and even flick away these blasts with, like, a finger flick. The Saiyans are a bit more simplistic in their approach. Raditz, an ally of the Saiyans, easily shook off the attacks of Piccolo and dominated Goku and Piccolo at the start of Dragon Ball Z. Shortly after this, Piccolo annihilated the moon with a single blast, and it's confirmed that Goku's Super Kamehameha can also shatter the moon. Vegeta and even his underling Nappa think Raditz is a joke and can dominate many Raditz level fighters and is almost unharmed after the battle. Vegeta makes Nappa look like fodder by comparison, as Nappa's power level is only 4,000, while Vegeta's is 18,000. Vegeta claims in the manga that he will destroy the Earth, and various other guides confirm such. So yeah, the heroes of Earth are a few pegs below the Saiyans. Honestly, a Singa Cyberman could solo almost all of the S-Class. The only thing going for the heroes is speed, as many low tier characters in One Punch Man have relativistic feats such as dodging light beams. Garo far surpasses these feats when he dodged the horns of Orochi, which blitzed the light speed awakened cockroach. Yet Darkshine, Bang, and Flashy Flash can all still swap hands with more powerful versions of Garo and should be considerably faster than light. The Saiyans also scale massively above the likes of Piccolo, who could hit the moon in a few seconds which would be around 54% the speed of light. But even Raditz had speed beyond that which Piccolo could imagine. Vegeta in particular is able to outpace Goku using the Kaioken, which would literally double his speed, meaning even at the bare minimum, Vegeta should be slightly faster than the speed of light. But this is ridiculously lowballed as even base Goku can move so quickly Nappa can't see him. So while they are much weaker, the heroes of Earth should be able to at least keep up with the Saiyans, and the faster heroes may even be faster than the likes of Nappa. This kind of leads to a funny scenario where you'd imagine someone like Darkshine or Silverfang trying to take down Nappa, and it just doing no damage at all. Even Raditz tanked to moon level blasts without a scratch, and Nappa's bare hands can damage Tien, someone stronger than Raditz. In terms of straight up fighting, the only heroes who even stand a chance are full power Tatsumaki and maybe Genos for being able to fight the multi-continental to small planetary monster king. 
If you give Tatsumaki the maximum interpretation, she may actually defeat Nappa, especially with the other heroes maybe distracting him. But Vegeta is simply way too strong for her to stand a chance. Even if somehow Tatsumaki did get the upper hand or was slightly stronger, Vegeta could simply create a power ball or an artificial moon, which would allow him to become a great ape and multiply his power by 10 times. Bang states he can deflect all attacks no matter how much power, but the strongest thing he's ever seen is Saitama destroying a city-sized meteor, and to say he could deflect moon vaporizing energy beams is a pretty outrageous claim. Child Emperor and Drive Knight both wield poisons, but the most these ever affected were random monsters. Even Kid Goku could resist extremely potent poisons. Child Emperor does have the Tickle Bug, however, he's never used this attack from the start, and Nappa would probably just vaporize him. Even if any of Child Emperor's tricks somehow took down Nappa, hell, he'd be lucky if they even worked on a Cyberman. Vegeta is far more cunning and careful than Nappa, and wouldn't fall for the same trick right after seeing it. So, after the Saiyans wipe out the heroes, they'd be pretty much unopposed. So that's when the top hero Blast would appear. I don't actually know if Blast would show up if God isn't related. No, I don't think I will. But I'd imagine he wouldn't just let them blow up the Earth. If Garo lifting a continent got him to step in. I don't really know, maybe Nappa found a god cube and Blast wants to go get it. Anyways, Blast's attack potency is fairly unknown. Most imagine he'd at least be stronger than Tatsumaki due to various guidebook statements saying he could solo the S-Class, but this may just be because of his hack's abilities that we'll go over. Blast can also fight with Awakened Garo, who can create gamma ray bursts calculated at at least over 200 Yoda tons of TNT around enough to destroy Jupiter. However, again, he never had a direct clash of power with Garo, only really threw him around a little bit with portals. Speed-wise, he can blitz the faster-than-light Flashy Flash and react to Awakened Garo and Sirius Saitama. Even much weaker forms of Garo can jump around the sky at speeds of over four times the speed of light, and then blitz characters that were evenly matched with him at the time. Casual Saitama can consistently speed blitz a even more evolved Garo, yet Blast reacts to both of them when they are both serious. Blast has a few other hacks abilities, such as his Gravity Knuckle, which could throw around the same Jupiter-crushing Garo I just mentioned. He can also create something called a Hyperspace Gate, which let him teleport Garo's attacks a great distance away, and even partially teleport a serious clash from Saitama and Garo, which destroyed hundreds of stars. He could even teleport Garo away to another dimension, and Garo could only come back because he can copy all techniques and copied the hyperspace gates. Even if you don't think Blast has any valid strength scaling, his raw speed should be higher than the Saiyans. I even had to use the most lowballed calculations I found, with some putting Garo before fighting Blast at hundreds of times the speed of light, with Saitama performing a similar feat right after. Vegeta and Nappa also have no answer for the hyperspace gates or gravity knuckle. Blast could simply teleport away every attack they throw at him and send them to another dimension. Huh? Essentially, to sum it up, after a couple Cybermen solo the S-Class, Blast shows up and just saves the day. The Saiyans are more akin to a Boros-like character. Probably someone the heroes can't stop, but that raises the question. Could the Z Fighters stop Boros? Maybe I'll make a video on that. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you want to see that Boros vs Z Fighters video. And I'll see you next time.